Surprise medical bills are nothing new, but Congress has finally taken action to help. There's just one problem. The legislation doesn't cover everything. Jennifer Krause is here with more on what it does not cover. So what are we talking about, Jen? Ambulance rides to the hospital. Of course, in an emergency, they can mean the difference between life and death, but they can end up costing you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Last March, Consumer Reports writer Donna Rosado found herself in a serious health emergency. She had a fever and a cough, and after going to her ER, was rushed to a larger hospital by ambulance. I had a cough that wouldn't go away and a fever that spiked to 103. So I went to the emergency room where I suddenly became unable to breathe. I was put on a ventilator for 10 days, and I spent a few weeks in an ICU where I slowly recovered from the flu and pneumonia. When Donna was finally allowed to go home, she was greeted by a pile of medical bills. <laughs> Maybe surprising to learn that the biggest bill she owed was for the ambulance ride, which was not covered by her insurance company, and she's not alone. A recent study found that more than three out of four ground ambulance rides could lead to an out-of-network bill, and those bills are likely not going away anytime soon. They are not part of new legislation called the No Surprises Act, aimed at eliminating surprise medical bills that can arise from out-of-network providers, often in emergencies. If we're protecting patients from surprise bills once they get to the emergency room, why not protect them from the surprise bill on the way to the emergency room? Ambulance providers and insurers often disagree on what is a fair rate for this essentially life-saving service. Ambulance companies say they provide costly, labor-intensive services, and insurance reimbursements are too low for them to be in-network. That means patients like Donna are often left footing a hefty bill, but there are some ways to fight back. A few states like Ohio, New York, Colorado, and Maryland have passed laws against surprise medical bills that include restrictions on ground ambulances. Also ask your insurer to review the claim. If it's still not covered, contact the ambulance company and ask if they can lower the charge or offer a payment plan. Talking to my insurer did the trick for me. A few weeks after I contacted my insurer and asked them to review the bill again, I got a notice that they paid the ambulance provider an additional $1,500 covering all but $283 of the original $3,000 bill. Now, the No Surprises Act takes effect in January. In the meantime, there's still hope that Congress and states will pass legislation that will protect consumers eventually in the future from these surprise and often expensive bills. Rebecca? 